Welcome to Broadway Golf Club. Welcome to the Danny Picard Show. Lou Merloni. What's up, buddy? Golf Club. What's up? How are we doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very so, good. Thanks for having me. This place is awesome. Thanks for coming in. Like, you're a big golfer. Dude, I just got off the course today. Where'd you golf? Marshfield Country. Marshfield Country. It was club. okay. Well, now, I, need to, I need to practice, though. I need to be in here. And he, he was already making excuses. He's stiff from 18 earlier. Yeah, I'm a little sore. <laughs> we'll be good. We are going to do a, what do you want to do? Closest to the pen? Yeah, what the hell? Is that what we should do? Let's pick it up. We got the track man fired up here at Broadway Golf Club in South Boston. Follow us on Instagram at Golf Broadway. Check out the website broadwaygolfclub.com. We are opening in November, by I know. the way. I'm looking forward to it. We all are, believe me. We all are. <laughs> um, where do you want to play? Let's go to uh, some tour venues. You're closest to the pin at, um, they just added. Bet the page black. Do you want to do that? Let's Closest do it. to the pin, 161. I like it. There we go. Continue. No. All right, you're up. What do you no, want? Do you want a seven? No, I don't think so. Buck 61? Yep. What are you going with? 18. Oh, wait, buck 55. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, the pin's in front. That's why. Let's see. Hold on. Look at that. All right. Okay, here we go. Get on this puppy. Just get on it. No ball. What's he got? I don't know. What's he got? Get up! What's he got? <laughs> it's the beach. Not enough. You have to go another club. Maybe it should have been an eight. I'm gonna stick with the seven here. Probably a comfy eight. Oh, maybe a little. A little left. A little left. I think I'm in the pit too. You went deep. You're, we're both we're in, in the same pit. pit. I think I'm short right though. Unbelievable. Should we try it again? We have to try it again. People, oh. people, people want to see us put it on the green, not put it in the sand. All right. That's got to go too, no? Oh, it's on. It. Okay. It's on. Yeah, it's on. All right, I'll take it. 49 feet. That's a three putt. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do. No yes, it's on. Here we go. What did I go to? I went deep left, right? Yeah, you went deep. Maybe Take a little off it. Maybe you caught down. Push the push the hands out a little bit. I think it's an eight. Oh, what's that red? Does that mean it's going in? That is on the Does that mean it's going in? Give me a hole in one. Too deep. Ah, too deep. No, you better get closer though. Is that closer? Oh, yeah, yeah that's 31. Ah. There it is. It's impressive. Broadway Golf Club. Just hit right here in Southie. Just get on the green. And now, we're going to go record a podcast. Let's go. Paul. What's up, Lou? All right, man. Thanks for coming in. Behind the glass, Paul Price. There it is. I love this. Do you miss? It's a great setup. Do you man. miss being in the in it, the radio studio? I mean, no. I know you do. I, I know you're on the radio still calling no. baseball games. No. No, I don't. You don't miss being on the radio you, you, and being in the studio every day? No, I don't. You know how many times like I see like a story break? And my first thought is, thank God I don't have to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, I know. I, I know what you mean. Like, that. like my world right now is just like Red Sox. Like the opposing pitcher, this team, this lineup. This, what can they do to get better? What do they need to do? And then I, now I just casually watch the the Celtics and the Bruins and yeah. the Patriots. You know what I mean? But I don't have to. You know what am I going to talk about? What's my angle? Or this story or that story breaking? And it's just like no, I don't have to. 
memorize the NFL cap and the NBA cap, and no, no, I don't need any of that bullshit. So you, it's funny you say, like, talk about the what's the angle going to be? Because yeah. a lot of it, when you're doing that every day, like in prime time, yeah, it's it is really about you know what what is the angle, hundred right? percent, and and it's also like uh, what's the discussion? And, and to be honest, and you know, it's like okay, everything's going good. Is there is there a negative angle to bring into this? Yeah, that gets a discussion, that gets reaction. Well, and that's why not, I say for you when you're doing yeah. it every day. I mean, yeah. when I was just doing it on weekends and we do the podcast every once in a while. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to lean that way because when you have four or five days in between, it's, it's a lot easier to yeah. to say, well, here's some stuff that happened. Like I can just yeah tell you how I feel about it because there's been so much time in between that there's right. a lot of thoughts flowing like in the football that, you know? season, it's a lot of built up aggression like Monday you break the game down yeah right by Tuesday you're like now what we talked for four hours about mm. the game on Wednesday now what we can't really hit on next week's game until Thursday at least maybe and then obviously Friday but yeah. it's like how do we do it five days a week mm. you know and that I don't I don't miss it I don't I don't wake up like I'm just like oh thank god I don't have to get in this world again. Well, also, though, we're so spoiled. Like, we, we've seen it all. Like, well, there's really lucky. nothing else to see. And me, yeah. me and Paul were talking about that on my last podcast, which is that I kind of feel like everything that's happening in Boston sports right now is, like, watered down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I think COVID, you know, hurt some things for me. Like, like, like I just, there's a lot of stuff that is not back to normal for me when it yeah. comes to the pro sports leagues. Yeah. Um, especially baseball, and we'll get into that. But I just think we've seen it all. We've seen the biggest Super Bowl moments. Yeah. We've seen the biggest comebacks. We've seen the greatest of all time. We've seen, uh, you know, the historic everything. We've breaking everything. of curses. I mean, we've seen you, it all. You know, I was uh, Sunday night. They showed. I went to this like early showing of the Netflix, the 04, the comeback that's going to be airing yeah, out when here is that soon. Come Coming out the end of the week, whatever soon, and. Like uh, Colin Barnacle, Barnacle um, directed it. I think my, uh, Nick Barnacle was the producer. So, you know, Mike Barnacle's yeah. kids. And they showed the episode three of, you know, the whole... How many episodes is it? There's three. There's only three. I think there's only three of them, yeah. But like this, so they showed episode three, which is the end, you know, beating the Yankees and winning a World Series. I think episode one is more 03. Episode two is like building this team together in 04 and throughout the season. But mm -hmm. it was... Like, it brought you right back into 04, like, what it was like to beat the Yankees and to win a World Series. And then there, you saw a fan reaction of 86 years, you know, people holding up, my, th my, my, my father thanks you, my grandfather yeah. thanks you. And it was like, for a split second, it brought you right back before we won everything. You know what I mean? And it was like, it's important to kind of feel that again, because mm -hmm. like now... When your team wins a Super Bowl or a NBA championship, it's like, yeah, you know, we had the best team of, in the league that year, and you have bragging rights. 04 wasn't Nothing about that. best team in the league bragging rights. It was like 86 years. Yeah. Or the first Super Bowl for the Patriots. In 2001. You know, or the yeah. Celtics winning it again, you know, you know, with KG you know, and seven, Pearson, yeah. all those seven, guys. Eight. So it's like those first, the Bruins winning it again. Now... You know, it's like, ah, uh, uh, all's great. They're going to make the playoffs. Who cares? They don't have a chance to win it. Mm. You know, and it's like we were dying to make the playoffs and stuff years ago. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, so, but it, the point is, is that it brought you back to like what it was like when it was raw and you haven't won everything and how special it really was. Mm -hmm. It was, it was great. It was really nice. Well done. I'm looking forward to seeing the other I'm ones. I'm looking forward to seeing that too. We were just talking about the 2004 playoffs when we were talking about all the moments and why it was watered down. Like that's one of the first things you referenced. Yeah. That was sort of the, the pinnacle of, like, joy as a sports fan in Boston. That come because, and I was at those games as a fan. Yeah. And I feel like I have to tell you this story. I don't know if I've ever told you this. Um, in 2004, you had game game three where the Yankees. Blue doors, yeah. Whoop, whooped the Red Sox. Yeah. A-Rod hit a yeah. ball over the monster did. that still hasn't come down, yeah. right? And that was, it was, it was over. We went into Fenway that whenever that was that next night. Yep. Tumbleweeds on Lansdowne Street mm -hmm. before the game. We were going to watch it at a bar. We walk mm -hmm. up to the ticket booth. 
They're like, where do you want to sit? Mm-hmm. We're like, are you kidding me? Game four of the ALCS against the Yankees. Where do you want to sit? We picked the cheapest seats. We moved up. We saw Big Poppy walk it off home run to yeah. right field. We went in the next game, game five, same thing. There were a little. There were some more people in there. Yeah. But it still wasn't like the mood hadn't returned to what it was going no. into the series. And we did the same thing, but we waited in line for like an hour. Yeah. And they were like, where do you want to sit? We bought tickets again at the gate. And because they released tickets an hour before the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they still do. They did at the time. And then, uh, obviously, then you get, you know, Bloody Sock. And then yeah, game, no, there and was... game seven. And, and you get to the World Series. Game one of the World Series. I snuck into that game. No, you? Me and my buddy <laughs> snuck into game one of the World Series. Yeah. And we signed up for every credit card known to man to get as many blankets as we could because it was freezing. Booed Woody Williams off the mound. And that that year was like, again, the pinnacle of it was. joy for it a Boston was. sports fan. And then from then, and I guess you go back to when they won it in 2001, the Patriots. But yeah. it still was like, that was such a shock in 2001 that that almost didn't feel like that was great. But the Red Sox were different, yeah. right? It was a different type of I still, I still joy. feel that way. And I know I used to fight that all the time on radio because the Patriots, like, it was ridiculous to say that it's not always going to be like this. And people would be like, yeah, it is. And I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. Like, it's been 20 years of Brady. And they're on top of the world. And everything evolves around the Patriots. And I get it. I said, but I always felt, and I know I'm biased, that it's, it still feels like a Red Sox town. To me, you know, Celtics, Bruins, big Patriots, I get it. But I was like, if the Patriots ever have four or five bad years in a row, Brady leaves, Bill ever left, whatever, like people are going to be mowing their lawn in the fall, Hmm. you know, with the game on the background, like whatever. It won't be the topic. And we definitely called that one. (laughs) Yeah. And and, but it was like, you're you just hate the Patriots. And I'm like, no, it's just the way it is. Like, like the Celtics are on a great run right now. You know, I mean, I think we all remember when the Celtics were like, well, they should they should tank to get the number one pick for mm-hmm. years. You know, like, what are we doing? And and the Red Sox have, have had a run here now recently where it's just whatever. But the team that's on top, that's what people in Boston give a shit about. Like, that's when it gets big. It's just that most sports fans in Boston that were like 27, just at 20 years of the Patriots since they were seven years old, it's all they know. And they it's can never they even know. think of – the Patriots not being great, the Patriots not being relevant, and it's like the team that's relevant is the team that wins. Mm. That's why the Celtics are probably the most relevant team right now because they're a great team that well, won a championship. I don't know. I think the Patriots might be the most relevant team right now only because Drake May, because of Drake May. Well, they're one also in six. Be, well, because Brady and Belichick just won't go away, and they're well, talking yeah, about the Patriots now from afar with the media. Yeah. So I think you're getting they're staying in the news because of that. Yeah. Um, but I get what you're saying. Like, it's not always, we're not always going to be, because when, when Brady and Belichick were here, every single season, you look at the schedule, you go 11, 12 wins, going to win the division, going to get to the AFC championship. Yeah. The 12 wins. And we were so spoiled with that mindset. Yeah. That's what kind of what the Kansas City Chiefs are now. Like, yeah. if you're a Chiefs fan, you're probably doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, you're going to get to the AFC championship, mm-hmm. and who knows what happens. If you're healthy at the end of the year, you're going to win 12 to 14 games, AFC title game, have a bye. Although now maybe a little harder to get, but still. And that's it. Go to the Super Bowl. We'll have two more weeks of it. It'll be beautiful. And the football season ends mid-February because we need a week to talk about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, that's that's basically what I did in radio for all these years. Mm-hmm. Football season ended mid-February. You know, that one year, like the last year, I think I did it, and they just didn't make the playoffs. It was like, what do we do? Like, what do we do from January to what? Mm. To, like, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. Because, you know, it's... March, April, it's sort of like you're just waiting for those teams to get to the postseason because at that point you're just playing it out. Yeah. You know? Well, now you're just baseball. That's it. Are you – is it just Lou now? Is it just Lou Merloni in there? You got Joe Stig, he's, he's done, he's retired. Yeah. Um, Joe's – yeah. Yo, Joe is, is retired from a permanent spot. Yeah, you obviously have the – But he'll be – I got a feeling he's going to end up doing some games. Oh, you think so? Oh, I do. Like, you know, I'm not like a lot, but yeah. he'll pop in. You know, I think you'll hear his name once in a while. All right. I don't know if he can walk away from it. But, I mean, you, you must feel like a ball player again, right? Doing it. Yeah, the travel. Season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you get down to spring training, and then the games start, and you call a game. It's great, you know, because, I mean, you try, travel with the team, you stay with the team, you go on the road. I did, like, 100 and almost 110 games. 
um, of 162. That's what I was just going to ask you. How yeah. many games did you do? That's what I did last year. But the beauty That's of still it, a lot. It That's is, what the season should be. Should be 110. Probably games. like a 154, right? Like just eight more. You'd be amazed how many more eight more days off would be. You know, on like a regular schedule. Yeah. But now it's like this. Game seven is November 2nd. Game one is March 29th. You know what I mean? It's like Jesus. Like yeah, April fifth used to be need, opening day. Opening day should be May first, <laughs> and then the season should end September thirtieth, and then yeah, that's it. Playoffs. Playoffs should be over September thirtieth. No, excuse me. Pl- um, the playoffs should be no. The playoffs do begin like October yeah first second, but the regular season should begin later. In my opinion. Yeah. Well, it's March. Like I said, now it's March. Uh, yeah, like March you know, 26, that'll, that'll 27. Happen. That'll never happen. Like, you know, shorten the games, less money. You know? Do you like the pitch clock? I love the pitch clock. It's the best thing they ever did. And it's not changing the game. It's just getting back to what it was and what it should have be. You know what I mean? What it should be. It's, it's not be like, oh, stop trying to change the game. The game sucked. Three and a half hours long. Guys taking 35 seconds between pitches to throw a ball one and then do it again. Like, there's just, there was no need. There was no action. Now it's like, grip it and rip it. Let's do this. And mm. it's, you know, yeah, the game's 240, 245, but there's more action. It's so much better. So much better. I love it. Yeah, I think like you it. say that from a different place because you're... Calling the games and yeah. what I'm over with. But it's not even that. It's just, you just want action, yeah, you know? From a fan's perspective, too. I, I love it. It brought me back into baseball. Yeah. It really did. I mean, it's just, it's, you know... Two and a half, 240. It's not like a three and a half hour game. And, and it's just all of it. Even like the extra inning shit, like in, in the regular season, the man on second. I know people like it's it's kind of jokey. I mean, I don't know. NHL is like three on three, ain't it? Like whatever it is. Yeah. So, but it's like. It that tunes, one's not as bad. No, I don't mind it. I like the it. The runner on second's not as bad. Um, I just think the concept of a clock in baseball to me is like. Blasphemous. I don't well, know. Here's the There's thing. just something about it. I don't I'll like. say this. It gives, it gives me anxiety for some reason. I, th- I know, and I get it, and I think year one is no question, but they needed it. It's like the game went no, and wild I get that. for yeah. so long that they needed something, and, and to be honest with you, this year you noticed it a little bit less. I think in two or three years, they may not even need the pitch clock because I think everybody oh, is everyone's just, just, this is how I play. This is, this is how the game would be played. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like they needed to – force this pitch clock on these guys because you're in the minor leagues like even like the last even before the pitch clock when a kid would come up from the minor leagues because they had it mm. before major league baseball yeah they were going they were Dude, up there they were like freaking towing a rubber throw towing a rubber throw you're like this is awesome so the more these kids come up through the minors like in five years from now they'll all this is just how they throw mm. and you won't even need the big numbers you won't even you won't even realize it hmm yeah, I mean, I, I again, it gives me anxiety. A lot of things Not give you anxiety, Sometimes. though. A lot of things. Sometimes. You know? Um, but I will say, the Patriots definitely uh, a bigger story than the Red Sox right now. Though they are. I mean, Drake May, and it's just the NFL. The NFL's king. Yeah. You, can't, you can't top the NFL. I mean, there's always going to be things to talk about with the Pats. Drake May, you know, with how he looks. What and and they, people kind of like the train wreck. You know what I mean? They, sometimes you do kind of like Were the, you a Mac Jones guy? I'm really going to judge I was never a Mac Jones right now. Guy. You, were you a Mac Jones guy? I was never a Mac Jones right, good. guy. You can stay. Ever. And, um, and, but it, I was going to kick you out if you were No, I was never Mac a Mac Jones, Jones guy. And once again, accused of like, you know, hating the Patriots. But I'm like, dude, like when people tell me, I'm like, what's the best quality of Mac Jones? And, and your answer is his mind. Who that's, says that? Who said that? But all that that was the defense. Like he's a smart quarterback. His mind, he sees the field, and I'm like, bro, he's a first round quarterback. His best quality should not be his mind. It should be his arm. It should be his feet. His athleticism. Like it should be things other than his mind. And quite frankly, I don't even know if that's true. And it just we interviewed him, and I'm like, it's just. Did you have him on every week? Was he yeah. one of your guys? It oh, he was. was. Just, you know, it was it was a typical Pat's interview, but it was like, I don't know, like. Like he's sitting there, he's got like, Lou, like you, matching Lou. pajamas you could with say his girlfriend, he, he making cookies. You could say it. He was soft. Like make, making cookies, like staying home. Do you home. think, all right, he was, you can agree then, he was not a Belichick guy. No, I don't, I don't. And people will try to sell you on it, right? Like, listen to the way his teammates talk about him. He's such a great leader. And I'm like, guys, you're forcing it just because he's yours. Watch him. He's not good. Why did this people, guy's why did the media love Mac Jones so much? Because Is he was something the that new I'm quarterback. missing with that? He was the new quarterback for the Patriots and you had to. 
That and honestly, that's how I think a lot of people felt. Like, and I get it, the fans like they want to root for their own guy, right? And if he's the new guy, then I'm going to support him and I want him to be great. But it's like you forced yourself and told you that he was great when your eyes told you he wasn't. You know what I mean? Like that's like whoever the next guy, like Drake May right now. Like luckily, he I think he looked really good. Yeah, let's move on. So you can I can't you can support him. It's my fault. I brought up Mac Jones. I shouldn't have. But you 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 can convince yourself that this guy is good. But you should also look in the mirror and say, why did I try to convince myself that Mac was? These two are completely different. This guy's good. That guy wasn't. Well, you know what people are doing? They were using Mac Jones, not wanting to blame him and wanting to blame everyone around him, as a as a the reason to not start Drake May. They were like, oh, see what they did to Mac Jones. You don't want them to do that to Drake May. But it's like, but I w- I never heard people calling for Mac Jones to sit on the bench because no. it was so bad around no, him. His rookie year, he so he Drake May right should have been starting a lot earlier than than he has. Now I will say about Drake May, I he, agree. he has some, he has a little Josh Allen in him, mm-hmm. but I think he's going to frustrate us. You do, in my opinion, I do. I think he has the big playability. I think he likes to run, which is going to be mm-hmm. enjoyable to watch. But ultimately. And I, was, I said this to Paul, we said this on the show leading into the draft, because at f- first, everybody was loving Drake May, number two overall. And I was telling Paul, I'm like, this is great. Jaden Daniels is the quarterback in this draft. Mm-hmm. If you watch his highlights that game against Alabama, mm-hmm. it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, let's go. Yeah. This is, he's better than Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Like, he has some Lamar Jackson in him, but he's better than him. Yeah. And then when... Everything flipped kind of at the end, like as you got closer to that draft, where it's like, oh, now Jaden Daniels is number two. I'm like, oh, no. We got May. I like him. Um, I just cannot understand for the life of me why you would want to get rid of Bill Belichick. And there was a story today, and we're recording this on a Tuesday. Was it Greg Bedard who, and I hope I'm not. I didn't see it. There was something I read on Twitter and I'm paraphrasing here, so Greg, I'm sorry if I get that wrong, but actually, I don't give a fuck if I do. Um, he said something along the lines of, if the Patriots don't approve this season, there's nothing guaranteed that Gerard Mayo is going to be the coach for the Patriots next year. Yeah, I just see that. And I see that, and I go, what do you mean? You just got rid of the greatest coach of all time and committed to Gerard Mayo. Yeah. You're just going to get rid of him after one season? I don't necessarily like the job he's doing. Right. But you do not get rid of Bill Belichick and then just and try to sell us on this guy that you think learned under Bill Belichick and you've been like building up to be your next big head coach yeah. and then get rid of him after one season when you started with Brissett, then went to May. It's yeah. no offensive line. It's a disaster. You're just going to get rid of him? I cannot understand for the life of me, Lou, why they got rid of Bill Belichick. I just, I, I don't get it. Because if, especially you, I know, I think Belichick would have taken a quarterback. For all we know, he would have traded and then got Bo Nix and, and done something maybe. So this is going to be good because I think it was the right move. To get rid of Bill. Yeah, move on. I think it was time. I just think it was time. I think he had grinded that entire freaking roster into the ground. Like, I, there was nothing. And, like, the whole argument, listen, I think that the, the, the correct answer is Bill and Tom built what they built. Okay, Bill helped develop Tom, turn Tom into Tom and everything else. I think the latter years, Tom kind of hid some of the stuff from Bill with the personnel. The drafts have been horrendous. Like I I saw the clip the other day of him ripping the Giants for not paying Saquon Barkley and instead paying a guard. And I was like, well, that's rich because this guy would never pay a running back. He would just move on to the next one. And he drafted a first round guard. So what are we talking about? Who, by the way, is a jag who can barely play. So it's like, I just think like his drafts were struggling. His thought and process of free agency wasn't. Yeah, but do you think that's him in a way saying, hey, maybe some of these draft picks weren't mine? I actually think he had a lot of control. Uh, he over did the have board. a lot of control, but I mean. Yeah. I just, didn't I just, we learn some things, though, no, that maybe I, he didn't. Maybe there were some things that, I mean, did yeah. he want to draft Drake May? Excuse me, um, Mac Jones? I don't know. I know there's a belief that he didn't. And I don't believe. Kraft I don't believe to. he. he but it's like to draft Mac. Jones. I know, but I still, I, I still think like it was like where are we going with this thing? Like, I just felt like it was time. Now the problem I have. All right, wait before the, before you get to the problem you have. Yeah, and I'll get back to that. The problem you have. Do you think Belichick would have drafted a quarterback if he stayed? I'm not sure. I'm not sure he would have. And quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know where you were in the draft, but 
I wasn't all in and drafting a quarterback. Jaden Daniels. Well, I was. If they were going to sign a Kirk Cousins, then you get Marvin Harrison Jr. And I would have done something like that. Yeah. I was even open, and people call me crazy, but Brady threw some shit out there that had me thinking, like, <laughs> one more, well, maybe see, two, and you draft a quarterback to learn right. under him for a year. Yeah, and I get that you got to get the quarterback, and, and you know, if you love the guy, you got to get him. I understand all that, but this like season is like, like the reason why I didn't think that they were ready for like a quarterback. You know what I mean? It's like they are so – they don't have enough talent. Like you're in a position at three. Like you could have traded down. You could have had a future one. You could have moved everywhere, got got another pick because I was like e even if – you're going to be right back in the same spot next year. Like your roster is not that good. And and because we always used to laugh at like the Jets who would have like a first, first pick overall, third pick overall. And I'm like you're bringing them into nothing. You have no offensive line. You have no wide receivers. How are you even going to find out if he's any good? Yeah. You know, now Sam Donald's actually, what, is he good? Like, now where is he? He's out in Minnesota. Minnesota. Like, all he's of a sudden he's it. good? Because, well, why? Well, because he's got better players around him. You know, and people always talk about, well, look what Houston did. They got Stroud, and right away they're good. No, no. They they signed, like, one of the best free agent run, uh, linemen. They drafted, like, linemen, like, two or three years in a row. They drafted a couple wide receivers. Then they got Stroud, and I think it was either Nico or Tank Dell in that same draft. And it was like... Yeah, we but kind Stroud, of build the team yeah, first. Str nah, I see. I disagree. And you I want even, the quarterback if you think I you got I want the quarterback. Him. Again, I look at Houston and I look at Stroud mm -hmm. because I've had these arguments on my YouTube channel and some of these videos with people when they're like, oh, Houston's stacked. They got Nico mm -hmm. Collins. I'm like, Nico Collins was nothing before C.J. Stroud. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, C.J. Stroud got in there and was just this young quarterback. I didn't see that coming with him. But when you watched him play his rookie yeah. season, it's like jumps off the screen mm -hmm. to you. And I think when you look at Sam Donald – he always had the talent, and I know it's like, well, he has some more talented people around him now, but I just think there's a lot of confidence in his game. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody, I, I look at it this way. This is how it should be. However he gets that confidence, fine. But if the quarterback has that confidence, he's playing with conviction, he needs to make everybody around him better. I believe right now watching Sam Donald, I've watched some Minnesota, he makes everybody around him better. Now, he's got mm -hmm. a stud wide receiver. I get that. That helps. But I think he's playing with a level of confidence that he didn't have when he was yeah. with the Jets. No, I agree. I um, mean, he is. There's no doubt. I just, I kind of feel like he, because the other thing, too, is like the rookie quarterback contract. Like, that's when you should be able to freaking go out and bring in all this high-priced guys. And really, they screwed up this offseason, not addressing the offensive line, not getting number one wide receiver to help the kid out. But, you know, you got to spend, especially while this guy's making nothing. And if it takes you three or four years to build a team around him, hmm. and then once you finally built the team around him, you got to hand him $65 million a year, that sort of makes it a lot harder all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you didn't even enjoy his rookie contract because during the entire contract, you were too busy trying to find a line, trying to find a wide receiver. When he finally got everything, he's sitting there saying, I want six and 360. And you're like, oh, shit, now we can't sign this guy back. We can't yeah, bring this guy in. The good part about that is if he's worth it, then that means yeah. you're probably a good football team. If he's worth it. But how many of those, I mean, we know who the elite guys are. You know, I mean, don't get me going about the Giants with Daniel Jones or like, you know, Miami with Tua. You know, they like, okay, we got a guy that it kind of works with. You know, it's like, okay, but is he a $60 million quarterback? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think, you know, obviously Mahomes is. Hmm. Obviously, some of these guys, Josh Allen is. You know, I think Joe Burrow is. But there's a lot of guys that teams just sort of, are we going to start all over? They're almost like like forced into giving a guy that's good, like franchise money, because they just don't want to start over. You know what I mean? And I, I, we'll see what this kid is. I mean, he's good for two weeks, right? He could be all pro. He could be... Whatever. Could be an average quarterback. We have no idea. I mean, he's made some throws. Mm -hmm. Like, there was that one throw on the run to his right in the first game. where he, It was almost no look, you know? Mm -hmm. Was it Pup Douglas, I think he got with it? Um, and obviously, his first touchdown pass yeah. was just a dime on the money. Yeah. Those are the things he can do. But then he'll have moments where, like, it, it, the ball's way overthrown. Um, sometimes I feel like he is looking to run a little too much rather mm -hmm. than throw. So he's kind, he does have that Josh Allen, and I just don't know if he's as talented as Josh Allen has right. proven to be. But w w 
We'll find out over time. I mean, it, it is, I think he definitely lacks some confidence right now. But that's um, the best reason of why he has to be out there now. That's why they have to play him because you have to. Oh, you I have he, to. he should have. Do you agree that he should have been playing earlier, or were you? No, I think the, he should on the Jacoby Brissett track. No, I mean Jacoby Brissett. You exactly. know, like we knew. I would say, like, if you wanted to give him a couple of weeks, which I don't even know if it matters. He should have played against Miami, right? Like, yeah, he that was the played game. against Miami. That's the at game the very he, least he should have played. That but then the you game. could argue. All right, you're going to have, what, Brissett starts like two games and then you bounce him? Like, why didn't you just start him? So it even looks even worse if you do it that way. The problem I has, you know, you're talking about getting back to Mayo, who I just think, as much as we got on Bill for not saying enough, and people have kind of, you know, mixed that up, saying, oh, yeah, now you think Mayo talks too much. You rip Belichick for not saying enough. There were just moments where Bill was like an ass at times, right? Just with his, like, not saying anything. Mm. I get it. Whatever. The Mayo Patriot says, way. Mayo talks too much. I mean, you can't come out and say it's a competition. He's doing that on purpose, you know. But you can't He's come out. He's trying to be anti-Bill Belichick. Yeah, well, I'm, I know, but it's like, you could tell that this guy, I think, Mayo wanted to play May from the beginning. When you come out publicly and say that it's a, it's a competition in camp, and then come out publicly and basically say that May won the competition, was a better quarterback, but we're still going to go with Brissett? Well, just the fact that he was taking that as many reps, sense? just the fact that May was taking as many reps as he yeah. was with the ones during yeah. practice, that's that's kind of unusual, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I, yeah, and I just think some of the stuff he says publicly, if I'm on that team, and I hear my coach say it's a competition between these two, and Drake May outplays Brissett in the preseason, and then your coach comes out and admits that he probably did outplay him, and we still go with Brissett, I'm sitting there going, what? Yeah, what are and, we and doing? like I said, like it's unusual for the backup to be getting as many reps with the ones during practice as he was, yeah, yeah. according to reports. The whole thing obviously. was the whole thing I thought was, was um, weird, but now we are where we are. He's playing. We are where we are. I, I mean, I also when you were hearing from some offensive linemen, even seeing them, I mean, there were a couple moments they didn't pick Jacoby Brissett up off the ground yeah. in the first couple of games. I go, well, there you go. And I feel bad for Brissett. This isn't his fault. You know, I feel like people shit all over him. He is what he is. He should have he should have been the veteran backup to a rookie quarterback right from the beginning, and everybody would be praising Jacoby Brissett, right? Like here he is mentoring this young great quarterback, and he's helping him out with his experience. But the minute he started over over Drake May, everybody's like shitting on Jacoby Brissett. It's not his fault. He is who he no, is. No, see, I thought the, people were shitting the ones on the that offensive put him line. On I well, thought they yeah. should have shit on Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, well, not, just, yeah, not as like. But I it's feel like, bad for him, but like that's the thing. You're the you're the quarterback of the New England Patriots, right. and you probably shouldn't be. You should be hearing it from people. Right. Instead, people were blaming the offensive line. They're blaming the coaching. But my point is, is that it's like, what's he supposed to do? Like, I, the the head coach told me I'm the starter. Am I supposed to go to him and say, no, Coach, no. I'm not as good as this kid. Play this kid. So he got thrown into it, and he got all the eyes put on him, and he's just not that good. You know what I mean? So everybody was sort of like, ah, this guy, this guy, this guy. I want Drake May. And he's sitting there going, yeah, I know we should, probably should be playing, but for some reason they're playing me. Hmm. Like, I almost felt like yeah. that's where he was at, even though he's a competitor and wants to play. And really right now the biggest problem seems to be the defense, though, as much as we complain about yeah. the offensive line, too. 17 straight runs. Like Jacksonville Did Jaguars. you see what Belichick said? Oh, yeah. Well, this whole they, soft the comment. The whole soft. Yeah. They – he, ran, he walked that back they a little bit. They weren't soft for me last year. Yeah. May, Mayo walked that back a little bit. It was like, you know, we played soft. I'm not saying we're soft, but we played soft. And, you know, Bill rattled off every single guy that was there last year for him when they were number one rushing defense. And although Christian Barmore, I think, lost. It's a little disingenuous. Barmore's a big piece. He ain't out there. No. He's probably the best interior lineman. Who well, he is. I mean, Judon. Yeah. He, he didn't even play last year, though. No, that's right. He was hurt. But still, that was a whole situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I see Belichick, I see him out there talking, and I'm just sitting back on why isn't he the coach? Especially with the quarterback. Like, that's why I asked you, do you think the Patriots, if, do you think Belichick would have drafted a quarterback if he stayed? Because let's say he would have drafted May. Like, if you're Robert Kraft, wouldn't you want May to have at least one year working with Bill Belichick? And That's I, 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 yeah. I say. Why wouldn't you want that? And I don't know. I don't know if he would have. Like if you say he didn't want to draft Mac Jones, was he in a spot where he's just like he you, knows he needed a? But quarterback, don't you think though. Bill could have sat there and been like, I, you know, 
Don't you go back to some of the quotes like with Brady when like people in the in the building were like, We could win with an average quarterback. Remember like that story yeah. got leaked? Yeah. And they're like, So would Bill have sat there and said, No, I'm gonna go get a veteran quarterback and I'm gonna, you know, trade down, I'm gonna get the best tackle available, which might have been the best thing long I don't know, long term for like building a roster, who knows? You know, and like acquire more draft picks and just try to hit it with you know, the eighth pick in the draft, trade down. You know, maybe the Giants. You know, you trade down or something. Then you get a first for next year, and you get another second this year, and you try to build something and sign a veteran quarterback. I could have seen him doing that. Hmm. Probably would have had a better record. I, I, but I you mean, wouldn't have had the quarterback get me excited about. Yeah. I would have loved to seen Jaden Daniels fall. But yeah. anyways, you got you got May. That's because uh, you, 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 yeah, you beat uh, – actually, would you beat Denver late in the season? A couple wins late in the season cost you yeah. Jaden Daniels, basically. Pretty much. Oh, well. Can't turn back now. Um, no. Belichick, will he, will he go to Vegas? There was a report that, right, that Brady... Well, you know as well as I do when you're... How much smarter you get when, like, these guys get out of the game for a year? And he's all over the place. And everybody's watching, right? I'm just saying, like, when the team fires their head coach... When you say all over the place, you mean, like, he's just on every show. He's on, I mean, podcast with Oh, Manning. yeah, but he, he he's, makes a lot of sense. I oh, mean, I love a, Absolutely. So he's out there. So the minute an owner fires their coach, they're listening to Bill every single week, mm. break down football. And they're just thinking, like, okay, like, this is, like, you're talking about Vegas. Like, this is, man, look what we're bringing in. We got a press conference. We're going to sign the number one free agency. It's a great PR move, you know, and especially if the team is – kind of already built, ready to win. I would feel better about Bill going to that type of team. He ain't going to go to a rebuild. I wouldn't want him to rebuild my team. I don't know how you feel about no, that. No, not rebuild the team. Because I don't I think mean, he's going to have five years of like, I wouldn't want that. Like, I want him to come in for like Brady in Tampa. Yeah. Come in for three years and see what we can do. I mean, he, he better not go to the Jets. He won't go to the Jets. No. But if that ever happened, I, I, never. I wouldn't be able to watch No, that would never anymore. happen. That would break my heart. That would never happen. I cannot. Dable getting fired back to the Giants. Um, that bring, could be it. Bring Dable over here, offensive that coordinator. That could be it. But then, again, I could totally see because now Brady and Belichick are doing each other's podcast. Yeah. Now they're best friends again. Yeah. Good buddies. You know. Your time heals all wounds. You get I, away I, from I, me. Just that. Now it's about respect. You know, it was a long time ago. We were both competitors. You know. Now it's like we're friends. Yeah. Yeah, we love each other. I I think they could both go to the same team. Brady could play, Belichick could coach, and they could win a division. Oh, I don't know if he could play. Brady? Think you'd want to play for him again? Well, we always say this. When Brady works out, does he throw the football? Like, is he just, like, is he just working out, or is he out there, like, with somebody running routes? Well, there's a difference, right, between, like, playing catch and working out. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, you're just going to stand over there, I'm going to throw it to you, and then it turns into, hey, why don't you come here and run a little? That's what I mean. Yeah, a little post. Real, real, real quick. Do, do a little, you know, and just start running routes. When you were it. done, when you retired, was it just, was it over? It was over. It was over. Well, baseball's not like, hey, going to go play a pickup game. You know, like, I feel like <laughs> yeah. if you're an NBA player and you retire, you, that. Base, you, yeah, go, yeah, you, go, you go play basketball. You go to the park, shoot around, maybe there's a game going on. Baseball, hey, let me go see if we can gather up uh, 18. We play a little wiffle ball. Yeah. Well, wiffle ball, absolutely. You know? No. No, no, baseball was it. Baseball, that was it. Well, now we get the World Series. Yeah. Dodgers, Yankees, who you got? Got to be the Dodgers. I, I mean, mean, I know you're rooting for the Dodgers. Yeah, but do you think I still think the up? Dodgers. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how the Yankees got here. But it's like the American mm. League. Like I, I've watched them a lot, and I, I think they're a good team, obviously. They're a good team. 94 wins. and um, But it's like you didn't have Cole for three months, and he's hit or miss. You know, he was great for a while. Bullpen was real shaky for a while. I felt like their lineup, Stanton, was a huge loss in the year, and it was like a two-man show, and if you just sort of like... He's right, had like, a couple big hits. I'm not going to let you guys beat us, and we'll see if everyone else can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they were... Chisholm added some athleticism, so they, they're a good baseball team. I just think the Dodgers are better. Yeah, and you know what's funny? They're not. They're going to go through this whole World Series, and they are not going to mention Shoei Otani... Aaron and Judge. the gambling scandal. I'm oh, not no. mention that. You, don't, you think no. they'll mention it? They won't mention it. No. No way. In the Isn't biggest stage, he's like their superstar. Dude, what do you gonna... think happened there? Taint him. What do you think happened there? I think, I find it, so these guys are really close, right? Like, they were like brothers. You hear all the time. They used to hang out all the time and yeah. watch sports together. 
You and I, let's say you and I are that close that we watch sports and football and everything else every day together. If I have a million dollars on a game, you know about it. You know it. about it. Right? Yeah. Because I'm not sitting here going, you know, in the red zone, running again, fumble at the one, taken back. And I'm not going to be like, oh, it's too bad. I'm throwing that chair through that TV, right? And you're going to sit there and say, what's wrong? And I'm going to be like, well, I got a million bucks on this game. You know what I mean? I just find it hard to believe he didn't know. And it's not even that. He didn't know. It's coming from his bank account. Yeah, no, it's just whatever. You know what happened. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I just have a hard time believing that if they're that close, which you said that they were. But. Yeah, but that's going to be hard for the MLB to even really want to look at. They want nothing to do with that yeah. story. Oh, they, yo, they don't. Do they story. want that to go away. That's why they don't talk about it. No, nothing to do with that story. He's the he is the face of baseball. World, nothing to worldwide. see here. Worldwide, he is the greatest player that we have maybe ever seen. Yeah, but you know he, what I mean. In this like three or four year span, like ever seen, and they just don't want anything to do with it. Just want to get it over with, get it out of there. The guy's good. He's gone away, and it's over with. Hmm. Let's just move on and talk about the World Series. That is crazy, but. I mean, he is the biggest name, yeah. And he did something the other night, though. Did you see this, the video where he swung and missed and then looked at his dugout? Like, what, like what? was that like you guys told me it was a high fastball and it was really a breaking ball That's away? the way it was portrayed, right? And they had the numbers out there, and it was like him with nobody on, you know, versus people on. Like, you see what he is? What's he, I, He's hitting like 8, oh, but, hey, listen, 818. You know, you know that I like to dig into the sign stealing yeah. stories. Well, he's you hitting know what like I mean? 818 with guys in scoring position. Like, it's something like 16 for 19 or mm. something like crazy. Um, but with nobody on, he wasn't getting any hits, which is, I, I don't know. It's 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 like usually with guys on base, that's when you start getting into it now, right? With like stealing signs. And, and now with the pitch comp, I don't know how you do it, but you can see a location. I, you know, a lot of it, honestly, is probably on the catcher. Like the way catchers set up, they're looking at catchers now just the way they set up mm. more than anything. This guy goes down on one knee, on this knee, maybe that knee, or just, you know, like the way he sets up, they're looking for tendencies of catchers to kind of determine what's coming. So I, I don't know what that was all about. And they're like, you can't hit with guys, nobody on base. You just can't get any hits. And the next night he comes up first at bat, nobody on, it's a homer. And they're like, yeah, well, okay, that theory's dead. Yeah, I'm not trying to take anything away from yeah. Shoei Otani, but... I, I do say, love the when I, I do, did that sign stealing story yeah. a couple of years ago. The one of the anonymous players told me that out of all the teams in the league, the Dodgers were one of the best teams at stealing signs. All the good teams, you know, really. They have veterans, did, there, and there's so many different. Did you ever? There's so many different ways steal a sign. Let's be honest. Did you ever steal a sign? No, like honest to God, with teams that I played on, it was never like on second relaying signs. It was always study the pitcher. Is he tipping? You know what I mean by the way the glove comes up. Is he fan it? Where is he holding his belt? Does he hold it his chest? Is it further away from his body? Mm. Closer to his body? Like those things you studied, and and you know <clears throat> if you got it or if you just got one pitch. Like you just got his changeup, you know. You you you're like, okay, at least I know when the changeup's coming. Now I don't know fastball slider, but if I see this one zero changeup, I can sit on it. You know what I mean? Maybe now I can go after it. Or one zero changeup, I can lay off of it, get it yeah. to a two zero count. But it was more of like tipping pitches than it was any of that other stuff. Like I I was never on a team that was really deep into that. Like, but now it's now it feels like just talking to people you have to that it. you have teams have sign stealing scouts mm -hmm. where they'll be like oh this guy like mm -hmm. the first inning it's every third it's so sign. advanced everything is so advanced like base stealers have tips you know from pitchers of when they're throwing over and when they're not yeah like there are legit like you know the good base running coaches they study this stuff good base runners study this stuff you know when a lefty comes set like there's a tell that he's coming over. There's a tell he's not. Like like there's it's advanced. Like it is more advanced than guys wearing different colored t-shirts for Victor Martinez in right field. Yeah, more advanced than like yeah than than air conditioners and everything else that we thought was going on at the Jake back in the day and everything else. Yeah, the air conditioners. Minnesota. What, what, tell me that one. They used to turn the AC on when Minnesota was hitting, and turn it off when the other team wasn't, so the wind would blow in the dome. 
<laughs> to the point where Major League Baseball made him put little flags on all the AC units to make sure that they were running properly That's at incredible. the right times. Yeah. Well, that was an accusation. But MLB did make put those little fans up there, the flags. Then there you go. It yeah. was true. Mm-hmm. Um, Gotta be. What are the Red Sox going to do this offseason? They better do a lot. They have There's so many options for them. I think that they... I think they'll make a big trade. You know, I think they look into free agency for starting pitching. Uh, I don't know if they're that high on Corbin Burns. Um, There are some things. Listen, I'd love to have them if they signed him. But there are some things with, like, swing and misses going down. Uh, The game has turned into a running game. Uh, Nobody's worse at keeping base runners on than Corbin Burns. He's still a great pitcher. But that's only going to get worse as he gets older. Mm. Maybe you know, the strikeouts are down. And I mean, he was still great this year. but fell off a little bit at the end of the year. Max Fried is a guy that I'd love. I could see them try and then maybe make, if not, if they're not comfortable with it, maybe make some trades. But they have a lot of flexibility between all their prospects that are already at AAA to all the young players in the big leagues, you know, so they, they can do some things. I think the thing that sucks about the Red Sox the most <clears throat> is that, to me, is that going into the season, there were just so many guys on the team that I was like, who? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, mm-hmm. you kind of lost. I don't know these, most of these guys. Mm-hmm. Like, what is happening right now? Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest with you, though. I did not see this coming with Jaron Duran. Mm-hmm. Him being this good. Yeah. I just did. It's complete shock to me. I'm glad that I'm shocked. I'm glad that he's this good. Yeah. Because, yes, you know, he put on some muscle mass and he kept the speed. Yeah. He, um... The thing with him is, like, I remember last year, like two years ago, it was bad. Like, overmatched offensively oh, yeah. and defensively. Like, overmatched. Real bad. real bad. To the point where I was like, I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, the first time you watch him play, you're sort of like, man, there's a lot of things he needs to change. And I don't know if he can. Hmm. Right? And I, you got to give every rookie and young player an opportunity to kind of fix himself, you hmm. know, and kind of see who he is. Last year, when Adam Duvall got hurt, if you remember, I forget what it was, Detroit, like 10 days into the season? Because he, he came out lights on fire. Yeah. He goes down. And it's like, now what? You have no depth. They're going to call up Duran. And I remember people were like, oh, because we just, the week before, the year before we saw him. He actually looked really good in camp that year. And he went to the WBC and played for Mexico and didn't even play. And they, I don't know if they were crazy about that. Because like he was really looked good in camp. And he went to Mexico and missed two weeks of camp and never really played for them in the WBC. But when he came back and you were like, okay, he's made some really big adjustments offensively. Mm. And then defensively, you're like, hmm, he actually, wow, well, he went and got that one. A good route. You know, he just took off and ran. Last year, he was really good. Last year, like this year's OPS was like 836. Last year was 828. He hit 295 last year. This year, he hit 286. Last year, he was really good. He just hit like six home runs, played 102 games. Because remember, he got hurt, too, with like a month ago in the season, month and a half. So he only played 102 games. And he was really good, but he didn't bring the power. It was like the speed doubles. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just took it to another level this year. Like he is – people always talk about like they should trade him because, it's, you know, Values high. Who is saying that? Well, that's like. The, if anything, it's like a, you know. Well, it's like the values that it's like the, build around them. You know what it is? It's a perfect example of like first impressions, because your first impression of him was not good at all. No. To the point where you don't believe this now. Your first impressions last. Yeah, but but like people like he ain't that good. He just had a great year. You should move on. I'm like, bro, you have like a top five. Like you might finish like fifth in the MVP voting, like war, whatever you feel about that, but defensively he could win a gold glove offensively you know he was fantastic on the base pass he was one of the best base runners in the game you don't give up on that i don't give a shit how old he is whoever's saying that is an idiot you got him under control for four years you ride that wave you have that is whoever's saying that that's just such a dumb comment Mm -hmm. because i could see saying that about a guy who randomly has a 40 home run season yeah and can't do anything else Duran, like you said, he's got the defense, yeah. he's got the speed, yeah. um, he hits for power now. Um, and he makes the offense He's just a go. versatile player. Like, he's an assassin. Yeah, he is. And you want to get rid of that? Yeah. I mean, he's clearly, he's gone into the gym, he's taken this thing seriously. Yeah. That's not a guy you get rid of, that's a guy you build yeah. around. And I hope they do. And he played 160s. He plays. Exactly. You know, it's not like... And I never saw any of that coming, 
But that's not the reason I would want to get rid of him. I, you, you cannot no, get rid of no. Jaron Duran. I don't think so. No. But it's you got to get that ace, right? You got to get that guy. Um, where it, are we with Bayo? Uh, I expect him to be a lot better next year, more consistent. I think this year it was like mentally, I think it was just he was lost the first like two, three months. You know, he signed, he signed that contract. They gave him the opening day start. And I think he just sort of was like, I've arrived. And, you know, he went out. too much. It, I think it right? was. Like, I think it was because I think he just, earlier in the year, he, he'd go out and he was like, all right, my game, I'm the dude, I'm the guy, I'm going to go dominate. You know what I mean? And he would give up two in the first. And it was, you know, kind of like, a, well, that, today's not my day. Time to take my ball and go home now. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like. Two in the first, and then maybe get through the second, and then the third was a leadoff walk. You know, then it was a double, and then you know, then he got pissed. And then he'd hang a changeup, three run shot. He gives up five runs in four innings. You know, and it was like he'd let things snowball, and like mentally just sort of lost that focus because he he was trying to be perfect every night. He expected to be perfect, and then they gave him a little mental break before starting Miami halfway through the season. The rest of the year, he kind of pitched to that three seven ERA kind of thing. You know what I mean? Which I think is where he is. So I think that he can be a guy. I just want starters, you know, three seven. That's to me, that's good because you. That just to me, it means you have the potential to be around a three, mm. you know. And I think is you know, maybe bad high, you know, mid four, low four if you have a bad year. But I just think there's more there. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, they just need more a, there. They need a top dog, right? Yeah, they do. Um, they need a you, psycho, not just for marketing, you yeah. know. But I mean, yeah. you gotta. When you kind of go into a season losing someone like me, yeah, it's not a good look for your franchise because I'm one of the diehards. You know, yeah. I'm the one that's showing up game four of the 2004 ALCS, mm -hmm. down 3-0, tumbleweeds rolling down, yeah, lands down. Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah, but you then you come into a season 20 years later. You know, yeah. Listen, I, I I hope that this is the year because we've been hearing about it for a little bit here now. As far as like the, we got to develop our system. We, you know, and I know how the, the way baseball works is like, you know, you, you do want to have a core guys that you have developed that are under control, that are, you know, for under pre free agency, all the other stuff. Mm. And when you have a lot of those guys, now you can go out and sign that $30 million pitcher, right? Because you've got Bayo Crawford now under, you know, contract, basically. Now you can go out and add a real bat in the outfield because you do have a guy like Duran under control and Sadon Raphael under control and maybe a Willie Abreu under control. You know, like, because you've got, this is how you put a, a roster together financially. Guys that, you know, don't cost that much because you've developed them. The Red Sox, when's the last time the Red Sox ever developed three guys like Bayo, Houck, and Crawford? Three homegrown starters in the same rotation. They haven't, never. Like, Buck Holtz and Lester, I get it, but not three. So now go put a big dog up in front of them. Those guys are under control. Now that you've got the core, now you got to spend that money. Get Colts it back. and Lester. Yeah. Throwback. Throwback. Like Throwback. that was it. They don't develop guys. We said something about speaking of those guys, and I know we, we've kept you a long time. Right. We'll get you out of here. Um, we were wondering on the last show, the loudest Fenway has ever been, as we kind of circle back to our early conversation about mm -hmm. some of the top moments in Boston sports before everything got watered down because of all the winning. I know the moment that if you went back and you got the decibel levels for everything at Fenway, I know the loudest moment in the history of Fenway. Of you do. Red Sox games. I know what it was. I, what do you think it was? So, And again, it's my opinion, but I'm going to say I, that I would put all my money you, on. Like, I had never seen Fenway, and I do remember like the early years of like 2000s, 04 and 07 World Series teams. I have never heard Fenway as loud as I did in 2021. Ever. Ever. Like that team kind of came out of nowhere. Like when when Kike. Bogarts when Bogarts hit the uh, three the run Kike shot. had a great postseason that yeah, year, right? But like when Bogey hit the three run shot off Cole in that playoff game, you know, and then it just continued to the Tampa series. And then Houston. In Houston, and then although they gave it up and they didn't swing it in Houston. But that was, like, as loud as I've ever heard Fenway Park. I was at most of those games. That was loud. Yeah. But it wasn't the loudest. When was it? Shane Victorino, oh, game yeah. six of the 2013 World Series. 
Base is clearing double. He ends up on third. Yep. Every little thing's going to be all right. Mm-hmm. That the building has never been louder than mm-hmm. that moment. Thirteen, yeah, I remember that because they let mo- they let more people into the building that night than they've ever let in. Yeah, we were walking around in standing room. We were on like the third base side, back near the concessions, and I remember talking to people going. I've been in Fenway so many times, I've never seen this many people up here in here that like this. That was a good one. And cops, they, they were just letting us in. Yeah. You know, we get it for free. Yeah. It's like, yeah. they were going to win the World Series that night. They did. But when Victorino cleared the bases, yeah. Fenway has never been louder. And if you go back and watch the video and then compare that video to other moments at Fenway, some of the great moments. Mm-hmm. And I was there for game four of the 2004 ALCS. Poppy to right field. I was there game five. Poppy up the middle. We'll see you later tonight in New York. Yeah. That was loud. But it was in 2013. Yeah. Shane Victorino loud. And I hope, if you ever talk to him, you tell him. <laughs> that he, he is the reason for the loudest moment. Yeah. In the history of Red Sox baseball. In it my was, opinion. Yeah. But I, I would put my money on that being true. If you actually recorded. I think that's a good call. Levels. That's a good call. And I used to love it too. Because I. After that, his song would end up like when he was gotten to the box. Everybody would keep Every singing it. Every little thing, gonna they, be they would all just, right. They would keep singing it for like a pitch. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that night too, you could hear the pop with yeah. the ball on Fox. That yeah. was huge. Like, I remember. You, that. I watched that game over and then again. He got we up were and there. did the whole did this. I think on third base. That was huge. Lackey that night was telling Farrell like, "Get the fuck back." Yeah. <laughs> right. That I'm was finishing. that game, right? I think so. Yeah, we were, I don't know, we were bouncing around. I remember we were down at home plate, I think, at that time when Lackey, and I have the video of Koji closing it out. That was a night. Yeah, that was. That was a night. That was. That and then was the 18, 2018, I think, was the last time I saw you. Yeah. I think, right, in the World Series. Yeah. We were in L.A. 18, yeah. Buck Martinez tried to fight me on the first baseline. Why is that? I was doing a podcast yeah. on the field. And I remember asking him, like, oh, could J.D. Martinez play first base? Yeah. And he did not like that question. Why not? He just he was like, oh, not anybody can just get out there and play first base. I thought I gave you the audio that. He should have always, he should have, they should have worked him out. I always say that in spring training. I remember that last year. I'm like, why doesn't he just get a first baseman's glove and take ground yeah. balls? Like, it's spring training. Yeah. I don't know. Why not? Right? Because maybe you're going to need it. And I just, they never, nope. Yeah, they won it that year anyways. Yep. I mean, it's nope. fine. Yep, but, never um, did. Yeah. Never did. That's it. So, there it is. Cool, man. I P- love this spot. Pick and Lou. Hmm? Pick and Lou, the show that never was. I know. That should have been. It should have been, man. We didn't even have a weekend. We were so. close. Yeah. That was close. It was. It was. Could have been. What you know, I told that story been? on a podcast a couple of years ago where it was going to be me and you. It was close. I mean, well, your name. You were the reason up. that I went to WEI, you know. I was? I you were that. the first person to reach out to me. Really? Yeah, and then Jason Wolf. I was meeting with Jason Wolf. Yeah. And yep. it was going to be me and you. Yeah. And then Jason Wolf was gone. He was gone. And then they brought someone else in. They brought two new people in. Yeah. And then they had me bouncing around on you the You know, weekends. I've always talked to him every time. I, I mean, I don't remember and then I had bringing it. you and in. And then I, wait, then I had it. I was back. It was going to be me, you. Christian, yeah, and then your boy Glenn Ordway came back and stole. Yeah, the Ordway spot came back, but I remember always saying, you know that, because I'd always be like, "Let me get Picard on here more." You know what I mean? We always had the uh, the telethon. We still played that. Two, 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 two. Remember? I don't. Yeah, you do. Remember, I we, don't. Corey and I used to do like the voices, whatever, and he'd be like, uh, "You could just text K Cancer." Oh, K K Cancer. Two, yeah. two, 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 and you forgot it too. And there was a pause, and all of a sudden you're like, two. <laughs> and we used to play that. We used to play that sound a lot, especially during the uh, telethon, because you always be like, you could text K cancer to two 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 zero two two two. <laughs> yeah, they, they just didn't want me to do it live. They, they K just... cancer. People are like K what? I'm like cancer. Yeah. No, that was well, great. Good times. Um, good times. Lou Merloni. Good seeing you, man. Good seeing you, too. Glad you're doing well. Thanks this place is awesome. In. I can't wait. It's two weeks away? A couple weeks away. This is going to be Doors fantastic. Doors are going to be open. Place is going to be rocking. Yeah. Hope you come in. I will. You know? I will. Bring the My family in. My nephew lives down the street, man. I'm going to bring him in. Yeah. We'll Tell him to show up. up. At yeah. Golf Broadway on Instagram. Absolutely. And uh, we got some memberships, too. I don't know if you're oh, interested. Really? Maybe membership. You're wearing the hat all, already right I'm away. St- wasting no time. Like styling. Promoting. Styling. That's how I roll. Right? That's it. So there we go. All right, Lou. Thanks right, for man. joining you me. You got it, buddy. All right. Love it. Yeah.
right, see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.